Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux with another supporter's stream. And today we're talking about moving over to new tech in light of Apple CSAM amazing stuff. I even had some Apple fanboys this week say, um, I see what Apple's doing and like I don't have anything bad, but uh, I don't like the direction they can go soon. And so we need to talk about what else I can do. So, all right, perfect. Let's chat about what else we can do. And that's kind of what's on the agenda for today. If you guys would be so kind as to let me know if any axe murderers are coming up behind us here as we are um, um, broadcasting from the middle of the woods here. Um, I'm not expecting a visit from Jason Voorhees, but uh, you never know. You never um, know. But anyway, um, how's it going, Hat Tech? What's going on your way? Oh, it's going, man. I've been eating this uh, CSAM stuff up, dude. This has been incredibly so, interesting. Okay. okay, so 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 I know that you said before that you've been kind of disagreeing a little bit with um with the hated one. Are you kind of moving to his side a little bit? I haven't watched his video because I refuse to just look at him. But and probably in this case, probably uh, there's been right. and, there's and a lot he, in terms of he, the potential that it could. Be. Yes, if he did a video on CSAM, I have not caught it yet. But yeah, uh, I haven't just, seen it either. Curious. But in, okay. in this, I'm sure he will. Yeah, in this particular yeah. Uh, instance, perhaps. Okay. Anyway, sure. we can right. talk about that later. <laughs> cool. That's good. Yeah, so it is 33C here right now. So that's uh, right around 90-ish, something like that. We are just on the tail end of a a actual weather channel heat warning. Um, and so it's uh, I'm actually doing better. I survived better than I thought I would. I was kind of parked in the middle of the woods for the day. Uh, didn't get as much solar power coming in as I would have liked, but uh, hey will be fine. Um, except they are calling sometime in the next hour for major thunderstorms to roll in, which was epic because it'll drop the temperature about 20 degrees instantly when that happens. That'll be cool. If that happens, I do need to make a rush and close the doors and stuff so we don't get all wet. But anyway, we will uh, carry on as we are until then. Dan, how's it going on your way? Um, It's going fine today. Nice weather. Nice weather your way. Did you get some of the thunderstorms today or just yesterday? I got them yesterday, and I got them like I got three of them. I got one in the middle of the day, which was really it was really atrocious. I mean, you couldn't see across the street, mm -hmm. and the lightning was really bad. Uh, the uh, circuit protection on my computer tripped and shut all my computer mm -hmm. junk down. I got one of those uh, surge protectors. If the power wavers 10% either way, it'll cut everything off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. But, you know, I went to I went to go to bed last night. And another one rolled in. Boom, bang. You know, who's going to fall asleep in that? And then 4.30 yeah. in the morning, I was woke up by another one. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly why. But my smoke alarm went off at one in the morning the other day. You can see it's pulled down because I turned it <laughs> off and then it went off again. I think my hypothesis, if anybody smoke alarm guys, I think a small bug got in there. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what happened. <laughs> so I'm thinking that's what it was. I literally think that's what it was. I, I need to go to Walmart and get some fly paper because believe it or not, uh, like I have a really good screen, like no big bugs get in here at all, but I get this hordes of tiny ones that somehow yeah, the little in. gnats will go right through the screen yeah and so um i'm gonna get some fly paper in here and uh i think that's the problem i just i'm waiting to go further in the middle of the woods to put the battery back in the smoke alarm to see if it actually still works or not or if i need to buy a new one i'm pretty sure a gnat got in there well i can um, tell you from personal experience insects can definitely short out electronics i can tell you all a story about finding a, a cockroaches in a router one time that was a good time Ew. yeah <laughs> yeah that's that's exciting Ew. uh Salbu, how you doing are you there i'm not sure everything's muted all right there. yeah i'm here um my camera is going on and off i see oh camera's um, going goofy all right <laughs> yeah um uh, just a uh, quick um, um about uh, keeping bugs out of your uh, living uh, compartments um i use this one uh, uh, for my home um um, is it a I bug think, killer or is it a? Yeah, it's a yeah, and it's um, and and you spray it in the areas that uh, you have uh, bugs, and um, it it um, uh, it has um, it um, uh, works in uh, in one spraying. It keeps the bugs out for up to six weeks in oh, just wow. one spray. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, uh, like I tried to walk in the woods today. I put on a, like a boatload of bug spray, and they were still swarming. I'm like, never mind. I went and rocked in the bright sun. Fresh instead. meat. 
I know. It's like, dude, what is this? Bug bug attractant? I thought it was insect repellent. Nope, it's bug attractant. <laughs> Uh, and, and in the comments, Jeffrey, kitties in the castle, vacuum cleaner reviews. Hello, mowing the lawn, but I figured I'd make an appearance. Well, greetings. Uh, watch out for that beehive. You just, you, you just mowed over the bee. Run, run, run. Um, okay. uh, <laughs> howdy, don't tempt us to fake you out. Uh-oh. Uh, all right. Uh, greetings, Switch Linux, and all of our um, all of our powers off. My phone is half dead. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hopefully Bruce. it's not an iPhone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's watching. Uh, good morning from Australia. Well, hello, Nick. Greetings in Australia. 33C equals 91F. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it feels like 91F right here. Uh, the one bug you can't patch. <laughs> that's what flypaper's for. Yep, that's what I'm going to go get some flypaper strips if I can. Um, I'm going to go hunt for it. Um, very interesting. All right, so uh, anything else before we dive on into the topic? And uh, um, just that um, I was uh, just uh, when um, you were starting to set up this, um, I was watching uh, uh, two YouTube videos, one of uh, Louis Rossman and then another video that he recommended uh, about um, uh, John Deere and uh, factory hacking and so on. And it turns out that the um, uh, uh, OS installed on most of the uh, John Deere equipment is a uh, Windows CE, which haven't had uh, updates in over ten years, um, and they are they're connecting this. Um, 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 he was interviewing the uh, grandson of one of the initial uh, John Deere. Um, uh, um, uh, I think you're talking about Gamers Nexus. I have that one on my watch list. Yeah. It's with Wade Cali or something like that. Yeah, um, uh, and yeah. He did the one about the exploding power supplies from Gigabyte. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's that's the Gamer Nexus channel. They 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 do some pretty good. No, no, no. Um, stuff. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Louis Rossman and uh, and uh, the oh. other uh, video. Louis uh, is all yeah. over the map. Yeah, but he was yeah he he did a with, yeah he did an uh, interview the other day. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Which which, which, right. which I yeah. missed, but. Um, it's yeah, there. and he, he we released it uh, this late one uh, just a few hours ago, and um, uh, and he mentioned that uh, in 2015 um, it was when John Deere started locking down a few things. But uh, another bright idea that uh, John Deere also had was that they are um, all equipment uh, from around uh, then until now is connected to the internet via every kind of uh, imaginable, um, even satellite uplinks in order to, so, so all the uh, data that is uh, coming in um, about uh, where you are uh, sowing and where you are harvesting and how much and so on, everything, every single thing goes to a server at John Deere and someone is manually watching everything. <laughs> so- uh, That's crazy. Um, the, we we really need those, Yeah. oh, sorry. No. Uh, Mr. Guy, uh, asks about the uh, kitty cam. The kitty is, does not make an appearance on the supporter stream unless he shows up in the way of the main camera because the webcam is used. Out of all things to have surveillance on, tractors. Oh, I know. I mean, come on, man. We need that. Well, I just, I just, it's like, you know, to, I'm just, I just really want the 3D printing community to like get some really good, like high density materials to, to print out some replacement parts for the good old 1960 tractors. That's, yeah. That's what well, they need to do. Those <laughs> tractors, those tractors are more valuable than these modern ones, you know? Yeah. Friends of mine yeah. that are and farmers, you, and, they're just like, I want the old still, ones because I can fix it. Mm -hmm. And you still can get parts for those uh, mm -hmm. even today. Yeah. Yep. You'll say, well, I, my family's got a farm. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Do bats need AC to cool down? Mm -hmm. Bats. What bats are we talking about? Like that, like, as in basic attention tokens? I don't know. Bat, because I don't think bats too hot right now. I mean, as batteries. Somebody batteries. <laughs> batteries. <My> batteries right <laughs> now. Batteries always get hot. C. Yeah. Well, my batteries right now are actually at twenty-eight C. Uh, oh, the rest of me is at thirty-three C, but the batteries at twenty-eight, and that's why the cats are probably nice and cool hanging out on the mm. ground because the batteries are down on the ground, the cats are down on the ground. I bet it's twenty-eight C in the ground. It's just thirty-three up there. 
So uh, right. anyway, um, and to answer the basic question, if you're talking about batteries, there are actually batteries that do have heating and cooling capabilities built into them. Mine do not, but there are batteries that do that because lithium, you cannot charge lithium for the most part. You cannot charge lithium when they get under zero. Uh, they will uh, they will destroy themselves if you do that. So I'd be careful. With not that. to completely derail us, but have we has anybody seen these graphene batteries that are on Amazon? I just heard about them today. Graphene? No. What are they? Yeah, they're they're they're, they're a new type of battery that uh, supposedly is able to like charge a phone like twice over in like fifteen minutes or some hmm. ridiculous nonsense like that. It's supposed to be uh, really expensive though. I, I wouldn't do that to your battery because while lithium <laughs> is designed to take charge fast, like like um, lithium iron phosphate, which is what I'm running in that my house batteries in here, those can take that type of charge you can you can like right, strike right. them with lightning and they'll be like cool um phone batteries um phone batteries should have a new, charging regulator in them yeah they um they won't i think they that. top out at two amps on most yep. phones so, so, are they well, i'm just curious like are they, are they is it like is it a real thing or is it just hype because i mean i'm looking at one on amazon that's supposed to be like 60 bucks but I, i'm just i don't know i don't know i honestly don't okay. know all right. All right. Let's go ahead and jump Fair on enough. into our topic, and then if we want to chat about that stuff, we can do that later. Um, and so what we're doing, um, we're following up on the uh, CSAM stuff. And uh, so if you missed the weekly news roundup from last week, you know that Apple is pushing out a device. Now, there's a lot of discussion. Even here, um, they have this wrong. They're saying that it's scanning your iCloud photo library against the database. That is not correct. They are scanning the library on your actual phone. They are just only doing it if you also sync to iCloud. How do we know this? They're also scanning because your Because their messages. documents actually tell you that it's scanning the phone, not the yeah. iCloud. And it yeah, puts they're, the they're hashes scanning. directly on your phone. And so they're yeah. scanning for this. But then is it going to stop right here? Well, they've came out and said, and we'll have an update on this in the weekly news roundup this week, which, by the way, will be at a different time or pre-recorded. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but... Um, in that uh, in that case, they're saying, "Well, we would never go beyond that. We won't seek political pressure." <laughs> ah, that's a funny joke. Yeah. Um, and so the yeah, problem is, they that. will now use they can use this technology now to do anything. So I had all some hardcore Apple fans say, "I need to get off Apple. What do we need to do? Like, no, nah, I've got nothing illegal here, but I know the direction that these companies go." Um, I know my political views and I need to get off of Apple. What can we do? And that's what we're yeah. talking about here today. So first, let's discuss anything else on CSAM that we want to discuss. And then we'll talk about options. Um, and uh, Mark, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. Um, I did a, I made a really big step today for my business, which will be really cool. But it's kind of a surprise. So I'll save that for later because we're going to have a review on it as well. All right. Very cool. All so, right, do you have anything else to say about CSAM before we uh, jump off of that on to other stuff? I, you know, I got the impression, like most things, if Apple is allowed to continue with this and push it forward and it sticks, the rest of the phone manufacturers or carriers or, you know, um, companies are going to actually fall in line with Apple and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's all. It's always been a kind to the headphone jack then you know next thing you know they took out they did something with the notch and then samsung followed right after them mm -hmm. you know they these actually i you think, know, these I think the notch was before apple technically i think other people were doing that first really yeah yeah. but with the headphone jack i the know headphone jack was apple yeah for sure that was and just then samsung That's decided to pull that trick with their uh the bottom line is if one gets away with it and allows to do it, the others are all going to have to feel, well, we can do it too, you know? Yeah. Can I say, if, if nobody else has anything else to, to say about it, I do want to make one, like, correction to, to this yep. <laughs> um, about the, the way it's it's being decided here. What, and I'm not, I'm not defending Apple. I just want to be clear on this. I just want to be specific about the technology because there's a legal implementation with the uh, uh, implication with the way this is done. Apple is only looking at the hashes on your device 
when iCloud Photos is on and there's a matching photo on iCloud. So mm -hmm. if, if there's not, this is why iCloud Photos being turned on is important. If there's a match, all it does is notify the, the server side of things that there's a match. It doesn't actually transfer that photo. If that photo is in fact CSAM, then Apple is now committing a crime because they're transmitting it from one person to themselves instead of going straight into NCMEC, which is the National Child Mitigation, uh, mm -hmm. I forget what the, the, the acronym is for, but the Child Protection Agency of the United States. Mm -hmm. So just to be well, clear on this, that's, that's, they're not taking stuff off of your phone. That's why iCloud Photos being turned on is important. It's just letting mm -hmm. them know if file 4X matches a known hash, find it in iCloud, send it to be reviewed by a human being. That's, mm -hmm. that's what's happening. So and there's actually so another couple steps. You, there's actually another couple steps. Yeah. It, because there's, there, there's, there's, two, there's, involved, there's two yeah. AI steps involved before a human reviewer. Mm -hmm. And then, to my understanding, I don't even think the Apple team is reviewing it. I believe it's just the uh, Center for the Exploitation of Children is, I believe, the one reviewing it. Although I could be wrong about that. I, I, sure I think Apple, Apple has specific personnel that are reviewing it. Yeah. Okay. But it has to be it ultimately anything that they review. If they verify that's what it is, they have to inform NCMEC because the way laws are written here in the U.S. and I had to deal with this when I worked at Geek Squad. If you find something like that and you do not inform them immediately, you become an accomplice and you immediately are equally as liable for the trafficking of that kind of material. Mm -hmm. So, and also yeah. my understanding is that um, the uh, notification of the um, uh, um, American agency. Uh, 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 it's not uh, it's not an automated process uh, there's a human uh, who are and um, um, pushing some buttons in, in, uh, who are verifying that um, this is indeed that correct yeah i've, I've read yeah. through apple's documentation actually to, to try to understand let it. me ask you this suppose Wait. you don't have iCloud turned on and you don't use it it doesn't affect you it's okay. only if you have iCloud photos turned on now that being well, said yeah. that does not, not stop yet the hash database from going Let's let's we're talking about as it is right now. Mm -hmm. So again, we're talking about it as right now. As it stands right now, if you don't have iCloud Photos turned on, your device with iOS 15 or iPad OS 15 or Apple Watch 8 or Monterey will still get that hash database. But nothing gets analyzed and compared and sent to Apple if you're not using iCloud Photo. That does not mean it cannot be done in the future. Let's be clear, it can, I think, technically be done, but it's not mm -hmm. how it's being done as far as we know right now, which yes. leads into another big problem, which is nobody really knows because Apple hasn't actually released the algorithms. Like we can't even, you know, data sets aside that whatever Apple uses mm -hmm. to determine these things, all that data set stuff aside, Apple hasn't even told us like the actual code that they're using client side nor server side. So nobody can actually authenticate mm -hmm. this as a third party. That qualifier is massive. That's yes. huge. Yes. That that's a big deal. Now I'm I'm glad that you said that. Here's my major concern is like my sister in law, you know, my, my nephew. Um if she were to take a picture of him in the bathtub playing or something, which is innocent. He's like four years old, right or three years old. Um what if if she has iCloud photo turned on, or if she turned it off on purpose, let's say she knows what's going on and she turned her iCloud photo off and I got her set up with a, a different cloud storage in the encrypted that she could use for her phone too. That's all good and well, but who's to say Apple isn't going to go and toggle that right back on when she mm -hmm. does a firmware update. well, well there, there's a there's a few factors yes they could but this is a list and of then they known have. images that is provided by the center for the exploitation of children so it's not yeah, it's there's not a protecting that trust. however however we cannot rule out that Other they'll look for in the future tonight. because this technology is designed as a learning ai and so that's it raises fair. more questions about what it could do. As it stands right now, it's comparing against known hashes that are known. So that photo that you're talking about wouldn't be in the known hash list. But that's not to say it could happen in the future. But 
if yeah because it's got a match it's got in the future it, it becomes more muddy okay yeah okay i think i'm good i just uh you know if there there's going to be people that are not going to be aware of that uh and they're going to have it on because they're not paying attention and it may not be in the mainstream media because the mainstream media tends to not be news these days. Well, well they won't, they won't care about this because, I mean, they're only going to see it as, you know, oh, if you don't approve of this technology, then you're, like, promoting this kind of, you know, uh, yeah, that's illegal the flip content. Side of it. Yeah, and yeah, and that's, that's the thing. Like, if you speak up against it, it's like, oh, you're in support of this kind of, you know, exploitative, exploitative content, and that's not the case. Our concern I, as a privacy community is that yeah. what could happen in the future when like the, the CCP, implications are huge. Right. That's that's the concern, yeah. which I have a concern is like if since this is all a machine learning algorithm, hypothetically, just hypothetically, yeah. if the CCP of China was to get a hold of this and start enforcing this on Apple, what's to stop there from not being like cross national pollination of the AI learning? You know, what if I yeah. start having normal photos that, like, I don't use iCloud anyway. I just want to put that out there. But, um, yeah. the, what What is to stop it from, you know, seeing, like, anti-CCP images? Because I'll tell you up front, you ain't got to look through my photos. Everybody knows I'm anti-CCP. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I can't, <laughs> you know, but, I can't trust another what human if, in the government or some organization that I have no idea to do the right thing to pull the trigger and say this needs to be reviewed or sent to an agency and this mm. does I, yeah they Let, should not um, have that we're, we're about 20 minutes in and we've not gotten to topic so we need to stop um yeah, 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 because yeah. this is a bad thing we know it's a bad thing our message today is yeah. you should probably ditch these products and move to something else. I'm not going to take yeah. the high road. Lewis Rossman is saying, I don't really care what you do. I'm saying for yeah. the betterment of our society, we all need to jump ship so that people get the idea that you can't do this. We so what we want to do from here is let's talk about the strategies to moving to new tech. Um, also, we might be getting some buffering or whatever else. My OBS is just, it's shooting up to bandwidth and it's dropping down really low i think it's because we actually have you know four people on here and i'm in the middle of the woods and so i don't have as strong internet as i usually do so sorry about that and that's probably affecting yeah. our viewership right now we have a a record high viewer count of nine that's <laughs> what i got too nine. yeah, Ouch. yeah. yeah. And, and i think i think that's because the internet like it the stream is probably not a very good quality stream my apologies for that Salbu, good yeah, one issue about this uh, that um, uh, I don't think anyone uh, that I know of has uh, mentioned is that uh, this um, uh, way of uh, uh, detecting how um, uh, they are using hashes now, but uh, they are um, uh, in, uh, there's a possibility that they are uh, screwing up their own argument that they cannot uh, uh, surveil uh, or um, uh, detect what uh, users have on, on, on their devices in order for uh, uh, FBI or uh, some uh, mm -hmm. police agency wanting to uh, get something off some phone. And, uh, and now they are uh, having some uh, 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 client side that, that uh, do what they say they can't do. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, clearly Apple is going way beyond uh, what they should be going, especially when you pay the amount that you do. So we want to talk about moving to new tech. First, let's address the issue that there are times that you have to keep this old tech around for some specific purpose. So you want to keep that offline as much as possible. You want to use it for absolutely nothing beyond what it can, what it has to be used for. So if you need to keep using the Apple devices, you need to keep them offline as much as possible. You need to prevent them from contacting in their servers and whatnot. Um, so that's really the first thing we need to look at. But then the second thing that we need to do to look at is start considering how to move on to different technologies. So which technology should we hit first? We got uh, wearables, which we shouldn't be using wearables that are communicating with other people's servers anyway. Um, second is phones, third is computers, and there's probably some other devices there as well. So anyone want to jump in on some easy strategies for moving to one of those technologies? Probably the cheapest thing to do is quit using your phone to take pictures and use a regular digital camera. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I got a um, a sure shot camera I bought like eight years ago. I was able to find a replacement battery for it. It still works great. So just clean all your photos off your phone and just don't take no more pictures with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember those days, um, you know, as um, way back in the good old classic days of geocaching. And I was a geocacher, believe it or not. And before all the privacy stuff, like, I don't even touch it now. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> it's because know exactly where you are when you're there. I know. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, we had in those days, we didn't have the, the cell phones didn't exist yet. So we had a separate GPS. We had a separate camera. We had. You know, our cell phones, which were, you know, flip phones, stuff like that. We'd go out with all this gear and it's like, man, the phone is so convenient. It does photos and calling and GPSing and all this kind of stuff. Very nice and easy. But the problem is if you actually dropped your phone, you're out of everything. <laughs> um, yeah. I remember one day we were getting some geocaches in a canyon in California and I had the GPS strapped to my side and we're jumping across rocks and GPS hits the side of one of the rocks and breaks the GPS. Well, we were able to get some good photos. <laughs> we were pretty much out of everything else. Uh, but, you know, one thing I, there. So going I back to that really model. really miss the days. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I really miss the days of having dedicated devices to do one or two things and do them very well or or the days of software companies not trying to do 15 different things and the software doing one thing particularly very well uh, mm -hmm. because I feel like you get better quality out of that for one thing and uh, you know the more you focus on one or one or more, but what, uh, more than one aspect, it starts to. Well, what's what's funny though is that oftentimes the smartphones can take better cameras than this than this the the cameras can, unless you're paying a lot of money for a, you know a really good camera. So, but, okay. well, okay. the XLRs are good. more affordable these days. I feel like than they mm -hmm. were, or yeah. good. Yeah, that's what made it so convenient. You know, people started using their cameras to do streams and stuff and to make content on YouTube. But here's the thing. Let's go back to dedicated cameras because I feel like you can get as good or better quality if you do like a DSLR camera. Well, yeah, the SureShot camera I got, I bought it for doing eBay type stuff because it takes pictures. You can take a picture of a penny. Yeah, and it'll show the whole penny, any mm -hmm. scratches or the, deformities. The, the or downside, though, he, the downside, though, to those, like, you know, the, the camera that I have that you use for the channel is amazingly good, but I'm not carrying it everywhere into the field. It's huge. Right. You get a decent right. digital camera, you can work it, but you get the small, easy pocket sized digital cameras, and oftentimes the phone does produce a yeah. better camera than that. But, you know, for whatever that's yeah. why. Go ahead, Tech, right. you want to jump in with say something? You had some strong words about uh, not giving up the camera phone. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, one, one of my favorite things is the fact that my like, cameras on cell phones became decent. Like, I think it was, was it the iPhone? four or four s where they had like a flash built into it finally so it was like it's like oh mm. my gosh i can take pictures of, like in a in a not well lit space it's great yeah so, and that like, was that, that was like i will that was never like a, want a separate camera a decade ago and you got a 4k camera i know I mean, that was amazing that was amazing yeah um and Crazy. so yeah keeping those those things in mind uh so dan's showing his camera the so Canon how, Sure Shot. So how good are the photos on that one? That one's really Mine's good photos. Yeah, this one does really decent photos, especially if you want to do close-ups of something. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said, you could take a picture of a penny and you could you know, actually do coin dealing on eBay or whatever, and someone can see the condition of your coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it also yeah. looks like uh, uh, that uh, particular camera has um, an, an optical lens and as an, 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 an optical zoom as opposed to. Uh, uh, yeah, it uh, does have some zoom to it. Yeah, I just want to say that th this this camera is not false. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's not. I, I, I oh, guess yeah, I guess we is... we could make an argument that yeah, maybe some of these cameras we don't necessarily care if they're FOSS as long as it's not perpetually going on the internet to check stuff. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> the zoom <laughs> is really <laughs> fair enough. The, the, that camera oh, is not really on good. the internet scanning your photos against known hashes. <laughs> so correct. Um, yeah. All right. Um, phones. Let's and chat then, about and phones. Then you have, of course. Um, hmm. 
yeah, we're, um, oh yeah, go ahead, Salvo, show that one. Yeah, show that uh, one. Uh, my camera, uh, main camera is uh, this. Uh, uh, it's an old um, eleven-year-old uh, camera um, yeah. that I'm, I'm still using, and I'm still using the uh, 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 original uh, 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 memory card. I have a backup, and yeah. um, this one I use to take photos. And when I need a GPS device, I actually have a physical uh, GPS unit GPS? that is yeah. not really connected to anything. So, yeah. um, I think Except that uh, if people are worried about privacy or uh, about what. Uh, uh, Apple or Android can do with your phone. Um, having a, a dedicated uh, um, uh, the device for things mm -hmm. is um, the way to go. The, the government loves yeah. you, Sol, because they're like, man, he's used the exact same device for the last 15 years. <laughs> Garmin. <laughs> yeah. Satellite GPS. Yep. Yeah, that's that's what I recommend for the car. You know, use a car GPS I, for the car rather than your phone because it's going to track a lot. I actually data. prefer this one over a phone because it comes with a suction cup you can stick to your windshield mm -hmm. and you're not fumbling something around to look at where you're going on the GPS. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so phones, right? So phones, of course, is where your biggest tech is. Um, I use a FOSS phone, of course. I'm still running a Nexus 5X. Of course, my phone, the only, the only ROM I know of that's still supporting it security-wise is EOS, um, which is fine. Um, I don't really care, honestly. But um, you can get a lot of other phones that are FOSS by design that are privacy-respecting, that are not going to be scanning your photos against hashes, not installing software on itself for, for you, um, and these are the things to look at. Of course, Pizza Loving Nerds Channel is the best place to go for that one just because he does so many different phone reviews, looking at the different technologies, comparing the Pine phones and, and the other ROMs and stuff. So this is the direction we need to go in. Is it more difficult? Absolutely. There is a learning curve. You understand that you have been captured because of your convenience. you got to break out of that convenience factor in order to uh, move your way back in. in. Um, anyone else want to jump in on phones? Go ahead, Tech. Yeah, yeah. I um, I actually, I want to, I want to kind of, kind of, I mean, push back a little bit because I'm afraid that we're we're skirting that that line of like gatekeeping for privacy, where it's like, oh no, you've got to do this if you want privacy, and mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're offering options. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And and so my my thought process is like, EOS, for example, like offers devices like the TerraCube Two. Unfortunately, is the only thing you can get in the U.S. But they offer options for devices that have their OS installed on hardware. And I think mm -hmm. for the average person, I think we really need to consider them as well. You know, like I like TechLore's attitude about it, where it's you you bring privacy to the to the masses, not the yep. other way around. Mm -hmm. and, and and so I think mm -hmm. that. Other options out there are good, but I would like to see better hardware on those options that are supported for a, a longer amount of time. It seems mm -hmm. like things drop off, might drop off a little fast just because they lose support, the community stops working on it or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's the, the biggest, on a commercial level, getting it out to the masses, I think that's the biggest issue is that there's, like, aside from like Pine and, and who's... Um, Who's working on the the Ubuntu Touch stuff? Like there, there, there's really not a whole lot of. There's like, a German company, uh, yeah. Lalo or Lowy or something like okay. that. They have their own OS plus they offer a phone with Ubuntu Touch. Okay. I wish I would have took notes when I watched this guy's YouTube channel because he did a he did one video on actually the phone with its own OS and then he did another video with one with the Ubuntu Touch on it. Right, but, right. But it was a you phone know, from over in Europe. It, my, I'm my, falling back. Well, yeah. my, 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 my point is only this, is that if there's one thing that Apple does well, and we don't, well, obviously we, we have our feelings about Apple on this channel, but if there's one thing that Apple does well, they, they very much adhere to the idea that you don't have to be a, a computer technician to use a computer or like a phone yeah. technician to use a phone. And I think we need more of that in the FOSS space is all I'm trying I, to make out. I so, completely so I, agree. Having some sort of easy to I, access yes, I completely is, is agree. We need that. We need to move towards that. But that should not be an excuse to just go, well, I don't care. This is convenient. Let's just give up everything. Sure. Because that's exactly sure, Rossman's point, too. Yes, when he says they the are doing this because we are letting them do it. And as long as mm -hmm. we are keeping buying their products, we are letting them do it. And that's what my point is. <laughs> right. We need we somebody needs to go over the over the hump. Right now they're pushing us over their hump. We need to walk walk it further and learn a little bit more 
If we're let, let's they like this, when, when I was in high feel. school, they required us to get this hundred dollar graphing calculator, and I came from a very poor family. My mother dishes out an entire week's worth of work to buy this stupid graphing calculator. The hell if I was going to just use this thing to add, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So I read through the manual and learned how to do basic programming because of that calculator. Okay, that's the attitude we need to approach with everything. Not everybody has the competency to necessarily do that, but I don't think it's beyond the scope of ability to say, hey, why don't you spend an afternoon and figure out how to flash a ROM on a phone? You know, that's kind of what that's, my point it's is. It's difficult even for me because this this stupid thing, the the blue bolt in one, like nothing supports this. Like I barely got that like, is not the easiest thing. The AI, I know. Yeah, the I mean, it, it's obviously it takes some research is, first. You need to sit down first, yours, do a little bit of research, and figure out what type of phone you need. But but well, that's I'm, that's I'm the point. Nerd, yeah. The iPhone three GS. Just saying. really, <laughs> I'm I'm sure that there's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you if you want to search careful. for them, you yeah. can break your phone in a heartbeat. You yeah. really need to be careful. If you don't know what you're doing, hire somebody for that. That's kind of a higher level skill. But um, I just you know. Uh, I'm just falling back to what what are the uh, what are the use cases? I mean, for me, I actually use a phone to be a phone, <laughs> and I also use it for apps and stuff for work. But I mean, if you're looking for a mobile device that will run your most daily apps and stuff that you use every day, what's wrong with a tablet? If you're going to carry around a camera. Get a tablet, like a. Uh, I think when it comes to Apple, they're covering their stuff over the phones and the tablets and the computers. It's it's everything Apple that they're going to be you, examining. Well, you're not. We're, we wouldn't be using Apple. Obviously, you won't buy Apple again, right? That's the whole point. Make them feel the pain. I'm talking about other brands. There's things other than an iPad. Well, maybe you can uh, go to a tablet that will run Ubuntu or Gnome on it or something yeah, like perhaps. that. Uh, Pine is supposed to be coming out with a tablet. So that would be one mm -hmm. way you could go. I, 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 I had a Pine tablet. It, it kind of sucks, actually. <laughs> Hopefully it gets yeah, good. Yeah, it is, yeah. As of the time of the that. first runoff, it was not particularly good. However, uh, they are moving towards a lot of positive directions. Um, yeah. computers. You could do a decoupable phone from Rob Braxman. He sells yeah. them. Yeah. Where he strips that. out all the Google stuff. Um, but the problem is, if you need certain apps, you've got to have Google Play services. So you're yeah. kind of, there's not a whole lot we can do. Specifically. Like I said earlier, if Apple gets away with this, then it's going to be a Google problem as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, so I, I would just quit using if, um, your phone for photos. I looked to see if uh, if Google or uh, Microsoft were doing similar things on theirs. As of now, I yeah, can't so find I, any I, indication. I, I, that might just mean that they're like um, Apple releasing that information. That you're doing that to the public is really stupid. It'll be in we don't know what Microsoft know. is yeah. looking at in their telemetry. But they're yeah. spectating That's right now to see how things play out. So they know how to tackle it when they integrate theirs. Well, I just want to I just want to say for for Microsoft's part of it. They've had this photo DNA thing built into their services for like 10 years. Yeah. So they've already been doing this a long time. So, mm -hmm. Microsoft, but they're really looking at actual like photos. They're not looking at like hashes. It's, it's a whole, well, it's kind of, it's kind of wonky. They are looking at hashes, but they're, they're less obfuscated than Apple claims theirs are, we should mm -hmm. say. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad I'm a Linux user, man, because so, I'd go nuts yeah. with all this other stuff. Speaking of which, moving over to computers. So, uh, of course, this this is not just a phone thing. It's not just a tablet thing. This is also a desktop thing. And so, and with Windows 11 coming down the pipeline and forcing everybody to use the online accounts and such, it's going to be a bigger problem, I think, in all of the devices as well. And so, as we are looking at this, we need to, again, start looking at other alternatives to Microsoft and Apple. And I hear the argument, well, I have to use X software or I have to play my X games. Good. Get a second computer and do nothing but that yeah. and everything else. Yeah. Use something that's free and open source that will respect yeah. your privacy. Right. And don't right. give them that's the right. data. Even if you have to use that software, that's fine. But don't give them that data on everything. 
Yeah, but this uh, yeah, pretty uh, much what I'm doing now. We had a double this, uh, in uh, our viewership. What, we shot um, up to 19. <laughs> but this uh, comes back to what uh, Stolman has been saying for the last uh, 20 years. Um, in his um, in uh, his talks in one um, uh, form or another, it, and that is uh, uh, freedom is worth the inconvenience, uh, and mm -hmm. that is, uh, um, um, and he he keeps saying that uh, um, you have to figure out uh, uh, what, uh, what your uh, priorities are and what you care about, and if you and if um, uh, people and uh, 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 those uh, who, who really don't care about uh, how things work and if they have freedom or or not, they're not going to care about this. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, if but uh, those who really care about uh, um, what uh, people can and cannot do on their devices, on on, on their computers, and so on, they need to um, um, look around for uh, what operating system uh, they really want to um, keep, keep using. And if that means that they have to uh, give up um, some of the um, high-end, real expensive games, then uh, that's the price they uh, are going to figure out if they are willing to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's everything. We will everything a joy. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, Dan, I'm sorry. We have a simple saying here in the United States freedom is not free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's very true. So, take sacrifice. I guess then, um, kind of wrapping up a little bit, the biggest thing that we need to look at and can, excuse me, and consider is that, um, we have to be willing to inconvenience ourselves for the purpose of maintaining our privacy. It's not easy yeah. saying, oh, I'm just going to drop everything and switch over to Linux. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should wipe out your entire working system and just jump over to Linux right away. No. As I've always said on this channel, get an extra computer, get an extra hard drive, get an extra flash drive. Do something to play around with Linux on the side while you still have your um, – while you still have the um, – uh, the functioning no. system and wean yourself off of that and onto the direction you need to go. You can do Linode. Go ahead, Mark. Linode's a great option. For someone uh, running Windows, you know, or Mac primarily, and they want to they have a little more privacy, you could spin up a Linode for five bucks and do your banking in it or put Linux on a flash drive like Tom does and, you know, do your online banking there. Or any, any, you know, use an end-to-end -end encrypted uh, 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 file transfer data backup tool that uh, from a trusted provider like Spider Oak or Trezoret or uh, you mm -hmm. know something like that that's compatible with Linux, so you can do it on your Linode or your local machine if you needed to. But try to do less and less. I think Tom hit the nail on the head. Kind of. See about separating your task out and see if that's something that you think you could live with, and that way you kind of have everything compartmentalized. So you're not doing everything on one system running Windows or Mac. So there's mm -hmm. less of a uh, data pool there for them. I would mm -hmm. say keep your photos and everything off of your uh, main hard drive and in any of your systems and put that in like a NAS. Like I say, let it be attached to your network, but don't make it public, publicly accessible. Only mm -hmm. have the things that you need to be publicly accessible, public facing to the internet. Yeah. Ver like minimize minimize the amount of things that are online. Stop using everybody's yeah. cloud servers. And the key take on me yeah. for, for the current uh, uh, CSAM stuff Apple's doing is if this is at this time, this is not triggered if you're not using iCloud. So if you're not, if you avoid using yeah. the uh, somebody else's servers, that in and of itself will be a step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, Tech, any final thoughts on on your end? Yeah, I think it's like you said. You know, it's it's a it's a process where you move in the direction, but oftentimes, at least in my experience, people who start it kind of start learning on their own. Like I got my dad started with Linux Mint on after his last computer died. And um, I gave him one of my computers and put Linux Mint on it. Um, and um, he's, he's using my old iPhone 7, but he's not using iCloud. And he, he discovered on his own, he discovered the Brave browser and started using that on both his yeah. desktop and mm -hmm. his iPhone. So, like, 
there's a there there can be a snowball effect and so like slowly he's walking his way in the right direction that's so good yeah. it, it's perfectly doable it just takes time mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. step after step you start to see yourself regaining your privacy little by little it just takes time and it takes sacrifice are you yep. willing to do it you know um, I use damn, Libre damn. Wolf. It's locked down pretty tight to the point where some websites just won't come through on it. Yeah, that's how I know it's good. It's, it's a good feeling to make to make the progress in protecting and safeguarding your privacy. It's a really good feeling, but it's not it's not easy. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. It's all right. I didn't mean to cut you off. But... Um, anything else, Dan? Not at the moment. <laughs> Selbu, <laughs> final thoughts on you making the switch to new tech? Come back to um, Yeah, um, figure out um, what uh, what price you are willing to pay in order to um, uh, switch to uh, the... Uh, uh, and, uh, if you're not willing to um, uh, make the price, then um, uh, you, uh, people need to, to figure out um, uh, how far are they willing to go to... Uh, keep stuff to themselves and uh, if they don't care then uh, nothing we sell we we are saying will um, convince them other, uh, to do otherwise mm, absolutely freedom is worth the inconvenience yeah and and that's that, that's kind of the take home message um so as as we wrap up here um so some final thoughts here um you know just making the small steps are really good and moving in the right direction um, and yeah, that's and really okay. where, even, where even we need to start, because if you do not start, yeah. you are complicit in them taking over. And it's not going to end with looking at illegal content. It's going to start. It's going to end with them. They're going to look whoever's at, in charge. They're, they're going to look. Yeah. Whatever, whatever is distasteful, whatever is the biggest problem facing America right now, you know, which, mm, yeah, we know where that's <laughs> going. Um, and even start gonna on stop. Stop in, uh, in many of these talks and uh, uh, start somewhere um, start by installing um, um, free software on your uh, closed um, uh, operating system and um, learn the tools um, uh, by that way and um, and eventually and uh, they get a point where you are uh, going to make the switch but uh, um, yeah, at least do, uh, do something to, to um, yeah I just had a thought. Yeah, kind of. they're not going to stop that with your photos they're going to go with this child thing for a while and then they're going to start looking at all your photos the yeah. next thing you know they're going to if you have music on your phone they're going to start looking to see what kind of music you have on your phone and in the end result you may wind up with a social score or, or how about um as level one uh tech was discussing with this particular article they talked about you know how long before the the movie associations get in. Oh, look for the hash of this movie on this particular computer. And if it's there, you know, either right. delete it or let us know so we can sue them, you know? Um, right. All valid gonna, stuff. They're going to start looking at your financials and your uh, legal documents and yeah. stuff. And, yeah. Oh, you're not it's, complying. It's not going to end. It's not going to end where right. here, this is just the place to get in. Yeah. All right. So we got 10 yeah, minutes left. We're going to have a look at the comments and then, um, kind of some some wrap-up stuff so the weekly news roundup i am busy all weekend starting friday afternoon so um i can either do an early stream or i can pre-record the videos and premiere them um anybody have a specific that's purpose? tomorrow yes so that's tomorrow so i'm kind of leaning towards uh pre-recording and just premiering them premiere the privacy one at the usual time nine o'clock and then premiere the next one i don't know either saturday or sunday what would make your life better? Um, it's your channel, Tom. Yeah, with all Last of the day. other things I need to take care of, it might actually be better for me to just pre-record them. That's my thought. Okay. I think that's smarter for you. Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll just pre-record yeah, them. We know you're in, so, freshly moved into a new home and all yeah, that so stuff. We'll do, uh, so we'll premiere the first one at 9 o'clock at the usual time. So anyone that tunes in for the regular unfortunately i will most likely not be there to monitor comments but um if i can i will but i will actually probably be somewhere where there is no cell signal at all but i don't know for sure so um so there's that um comments let's see christopher wants to know who currently has an iphone huh. 
let's see. Been, uh, Linux Bytes has been thinking about using Linode. TLM.li forward slash Linode. There you go. Uh, I can vouch. I'm running my NetCloud server on Linode using uh, Tom's mm -hmm. code. Very good. So you're the one. <laughs> um, I am. Uh, I am. I might be just the one. <laughs> no, no. I, I've, I've, uh, I've had enough affiliates come through that they're like, "Hey, you need to give us some banking information in the W nine. It's like, "All right." Um, so oh, wow, you're nice. not the only one. Um, I know I'm running Nextcloud and about thirty clients sites over there, and I don't know a bunch of stuff. So. Um, what about VPNs? Uh, VPNs will not help you with the CSAM situation. Um, VPNs would be good. We can chat about VPNs again sometime. Uh, I, let's see. I adopted one so I can watch the Olympics. We can talk about that another time. But Ooh, <laughs> DNS <laughs> really said, like uh, private DNS to where you change your like a DNS service that you pay for. Uh, and that offers a little more protection than just... Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if yeah, I'm not mistaken on Linode, you can you spin up your oh, own yes. um, um, DNS over HTTPS if you want. I mean, yeah. feed that, that into Firefox, yeah. you know, a little bit more secure. Um, Pre-recorded will not stop. Uh, there is one comment that I noticed. Uh, that, yep, that, that, like, um, uh, Christopher H said uh, that uh, it's your data, so the only person who can control it is, it is you. If you outsource it, it's no longer private. And that's something mm, yes. that people forget when they are using this that's cloud storage. Point. Very valid point. Yeah, if you if you hand it to somebody else, it is no longer yours. Absolutely. And then if it gets hacked and stolen, it's everybody's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet dreams are made of cheese. Who am I to disagree? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Jeffrey, giving us some fun stuff. Can't believe how much Windows 11 yeah, is missing use, the mark. Yeah, e waste. Yep. I don't use any cloud services. I don't use any. Uh, I don't even use any servers outside the house. Yeah. I keep the everything only local. I have a Windows install is for my game. That's it. Yeah. I yeah. actually learned to game on Linux and only buy games that I can get running on Linux. And then I got really yeah. choosy with that. I didn't want all my games to be Steam orientated. Yeah. So I started buying them, some of them from GOG and yeah. running them in Lutris. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to get this one running in Lutris. I could not get my one game that I play. I could not yeah. get it running. It's my golf. Lutris is really fussy to get Steam games to run in. Mm hmm. Um, how easy is Steam it Steam. to install Lineage OS on older Samsung phones? So you go to the Lineage website, and there is a list of all the Samsung phones it supports. Uh, also a note yeah. on the Samsung phones, some of them will support European but not American ones. It also depends on where the Samsung phone was purchased from. Um, you need to make sure it's unlocked. They will have install guides, and for the most part, they are spot on and very easy to follow. Lineage. I'm going to get the link for you. Real quick. I put a link in the chat already. Oh, great. Thanks. Excellent. Thank Good deal. Thank you. Uh, I don't see it showing up yet. I've got phones up? and tablets. Oh, they may be blocking me because it's a link. No. All right. Hold on. Do I need to do it too? Hold on, I had my that's, own put in there. Uh, that, that's probably the route that I'm going to go because I do, I feel like Samsung would be, but you know, it's Android, so it uses Google. Um, I'll probably it's, do Lineage OS. And, uh, uh, right. Samsung is the Apple for, for Android. That's what that is. <laughs> I guess um, do Android as an app store, and maybe I can get, you know, at least find alternatives that, I like a lot of this stuff. I don't have to run this on my phone. Yeah. Like you say, I've yeah, got I, a computer. I, I try not to use my phone for anything other than a, as a phone. And with, you know, a little bit of internet stuff here and there, and yeah. that's about it. Yeah, I don't have um, to have this app on here. We're going to, um, we'll go ahead and wrap up the stream here. Um, now, I'm going to be talking on my Christian channel tonight. Uh, Mark, you're getting a lot of feedback. Oh, uh, Mark. Am um, I getting buzz and what? There you go. Mark did. Muted Mark because he's getting a lot of feedback. Um, so I'll be streaming on my uh, Christian channel tonight. 
Um, we are talking about the Antifa crowd that attacked a group of um, uh, churchgoers, including throwing a flash grenade into a group of children. Uh, we're talking about that over there on the Christian channel. So no, they're peaceful. Nine o'clock. Oh, oh, and, and it's just an idea. The the, the very peaceful idea assaulted a bunch of uh, children unprovokedly. Correct. Um, we'll be talking about that um, on the Christian channel. It will be a good one. Um, so jump on over there if such things interest you. Um, but with that, we will wrap this one up here. Thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we'll have the weekly news roundup as a pre-recorded premiering tomorrow at the regular time at 9. So we will catch you guys then. And, ooh, I just heard the first Thunderbolt. So let's.